In this video, I'm going to use three very different filters to create three very different black and white photos. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that really does have everything for us photographers, including a whole bunch of filters. And that's what this is all about today. We're going to have a look at three filters and see how I can use them to create three very different color pictures and very different black and white effects. Now, the filters I'm going to use are a polarizing filter, a nine-stop neutral density filter and an infrared R72 filter. Now looking at them, they actually all look very, very similar. They're all basically black filters, but they all give very different results. Okay, so let's get going with the polarizing filter. Now, chances are you've got a polarizing filter already. Most photographers have one, but if you haven't, make sure you get the circular polarizing filter. Now, a polarizing filter is one of those filters that every photographer should have. They're brilliant at making blue skies really deep blue, making colors really punchy, taking away reflection and glare from surfaces like water, and even slowing down your shutter speed to give you a longer exposure. Now, I'm going to use it today to get a nice blue sky, and if we can get a bit of cloud in the shot as well, then that should add to the scene. Okay, so I've attached the polarizing filter to the front of my Canon 24-105 lens. I framed up my shot. Now, to get a polarizing filter to give you a really strong effect, you want to have the light in the right direction. You've got to have the sun more or less 90 degrees to the shot that you're taking. So for me, the sun is, well, it's not much sun out at the moment, but it's, it's over there when you see it. So being more or less 90 degrees here should give me a nice deep polarized blue. In fact, if you've not really seen your polarizer working the way you'd hoped, that could be one of the reasons. You're either looking towards the sun or you have the sun on your back. Okay, now the next thing to do is you need to rotate the filter around until you see the polarization effect happened. And it will happen at one specific spot. So just there. Okay, then you can take your picture. And as you can see, those skies look really blue, very, very powerful, and gives a great result. The little clouds stick out very, very nicely indeed. And in black and white, we can use that to our advantage to make a very punchy, powerful black and white effect. So next up is going to be my favorite filter, the Hoyer ND400, a nine-stop neutral density filter. Now you've seen me use it before when we did the video in Haysborough and we made the crop move. In this case, well, there is a little bit of movement, the sky is moving, so we may get a little bit of movement from this filter. Let's attach it and find out. Now with this filter, I recommend sorting out your picture in live view mode so you can really see what you're getting. Then I'm gonna to switch to aperture priority mode. I've chosen F22 for the, the biggest depth of field, but also the slowest shutter speed and I've chosen the ISO as low as it goes, 100 ISO. Okay, let's cover the viewfinder. Take the shot. Yeah, and that worked really well. We can see some movement in the clouds there, and that shows that the nine-stop neutral density filter worked really well. It's okay in color, but I think it's much more powerful as a black and white image that really makes the most of this scene. So with the weather about to take a turn for the worst, I'm ready for my last filter. And this is the R72, the infrared filter. Now, this isn't a filter that you're likely to use every single day. In fact, you're gonna to have to be really seriously into wanting to try infrared photography to try this. Perhaps not so serious as to have your camera converted to infrared, that's kind of a one-way trip. But this filter takes a image that's very close to the infrared spectrum. It's not true infrared, it's just very, very red. And it is seriously dark too. So it's gonna be the same trick as the neutral density filter. Use the live view to frame everything up and then we're gonna take our shot. 
So it's a bit trial and error with this filter to say the least. My camera meter just doesn't seem to like it whatsoever. So I'm trying a ISO of 800, which I know seems really high, but believe me, this is a seriously dark filter and it needs that kind of exposure to get any light through to be registered by the sensor. Now it's worth noting that different cameras will expose differently for this filter. Some cameras are better at it than others. A Canon 5D Mark II, not bad just takes quite a long time to get anything exposed on the sensor. So here's the image from the R72 filter and this was the very last picture I managed to take and if you want to find out why that happens keep watching to the end of the video and see what uh, suddenly dramatically changed right at the end. Now it looks very, very red, and if you use the R72 filter, this is kind of what you expect, a very red picture. Now, you can try and correct that color balance by changing the temperature, but uh, in this case, it doesn't matter where I put my temperature, it's still going to look red. In fact, when I move my temperature down, it actually makes the picture look even darker. I did say my camera was struggling with the exposure a bit, and normally I'd take another picture, but that wasn't possible. Go have a look why. So what I'm going to do here in RAW is just increase my exposure up, well, probably a couple of stops. Now that's going to add a little bit of noise, as does using ISO 800, but I'm not going to worry too much because one of the lovely things about shooting a infrared picture is if you go back to the original infrared films, they were quite grainy mediums, so you would find that it was quite a, a noisy kind of picture. And this is what we're going to end up with here. Okay, so as a color picture, it's not particularly usable. And although you can change the color inside of Photoshop, I'm just gonna go straight for the black and white. I'm gonna take the saturation all the way down and we'll make that a monochromatic picture. Now it does look a little bit flat like this. By this point in the day, the lighting had absolutely gone. It was really flat and, and grim looking lighting. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work here and really that means increasing the contrast. So I'm just gonna get the contrast slider. And I'm gonna take that all the way up to maximum. Now that gives us a much brighter whites, but much darker blacks. So to get around that, I'm gonna get the shadows and I'm gonna increase the shadows really quite high just so we open those up a little bit. Another slider that has some contrast effect is clarity. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned that I like clarity, but I do like clarity. So let's put clarity pretty much all the way up to maximum. Now that gives a very dramatic sky, really looking good, but it does look a little bit dark and gloomy here on the boat. So what we need to do now is a little bit of local adjustments. By local adjustments, I mean the opposite of global. Global means if you change saturation, everything changes. But for local, I'm gonna get the adjustment brush here. And on the adjustment brush, I'm just gonna increase the exposure by maybe a stop, something like that. And I'm just gonna paint a stop of light down here onto the side of the boat. Because when I set my camera down to start taking the photos, this is what I was seeing. Sadly, the lighting didn't last very long before everything went slightly awry. Now, it's also a little bit dark up on the cabin of the boat, so we'll add a little bit of light in there too. And we've just spilt a little bit into the sky, so I'll jump over to the Arrays option. We'll make the brush a little bit smaller, and we'll just tidy that up a little bit in a few places like so. Okay, so I've got a, a bit more light in there. It may need a little bit more, so I can come back to the exposure slider, and I can tweak the lighting on that boat up and down as I see fit. Now we can add in more brushes. So I'm gonna get a new brush and I'm just gonna paint a little bit more light down here onto the, the foreground, onto the, the beach. That's a little bit too bright. So we'll just bring that down. Maybe just turn the, the highlights down like that as well. And if I zoom in very close over the cabin, you can see that really there is a bright highlight through the windows that probably shouldn't be there. So I'm gonna get another new brush and I'm gonna decrease the exposure by a stop and I'm gonna come right down to the bottom and find the auto mask option. Now, normally with the adjustment brush in RAW and in Lightroom, I recommend turning off the auto mask because it can have some very weird effects, but occasionally, like now, it's perfect. So let's click on auto mask and we'll just click inside of the little boathouse like that. There we go. We'll add a little bit of detail in there. And again, we can come up and change the amount of detail after we've clicked using the sliders. 
OK, so I'm happy with that. That's now looking uh, much better, a much more contrasty image. Final thing I want to do is just add some colour and tone to the picture. So to do that, I'm going to go to the split tone option. Now, all I want to do is add some sepia tone. And if you want to add sepia tone, then the place to do it is in the shadows. So to get this to work, you have to start, weirdly, by putting saturation in first. So you have to put this in before you choose the colour, otherwise you don't see anything happen. Then I'm going to put the hue in, and for sepia, I'm going to go for something around about 40. I could do a kind of cold blue feel, and I think this picture actually works quite well like that. But um, trust me, it was cold enough on the beach. I don't want to be reminded of that, so I'm going to make it look a little bit warmer. Let's pop it up to 40 like that. And there you go, that's my picture completed. I'll click on the open image button and we'll leave raw behind and return into Photoshop. And there it is, my infrared picture completed. Well, with the weather about to turn, that's me done for another shoot. Don't forget, this video is sponsored by Adorama, the amazing people with the amazing camera store. And if you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Gavin Hurry, thanks for watching. <laughs> oh no! Take and Make Great Photos is brought to you by Adorama, the place for everything photography. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.